Hey there, and welcome back to this bite-sized episode of the Mission Makers podcast. We're going to dive back into some of our favorite episodes of the season and pull out some of the key lessons from our amazing guests that will hopefully inspire and fuel your missions wherever you are in the world. So following on from last week's bite-sized episode, motorsports is an area that I've worked and competed in for many years, and the topic of equality is something that I feel very, very strongly about. So it was an immense honor to interview a lady who in a very short space of time has elevated that equality for women across the world through the W Series, which has recently announced a partnership with Formula One. The founder of this series, Catherine bond joins us today and shares her insights behind this monumental mission. I think, you know, the face of motorsport really is changing. Yeah, it definitely is. And we can only thank you for all of the, the hard work that you've uh, you've been doing to change to change the game. Um, so going a little bit into the W series. Um, now, I know that rather famously, the idea kind of came around while sharing a glass of wine with friends around the dinner table. Um, and you've you've since attributed a lot of that growth of the series to some of your colleagues like David Coulthard, Matt Bishop, Dave Ryan. So how did that team kind of come together, you know, coming from a completely different um, industry and how have your strengths kind of complemented each other along this journey? Well, David Coulthard was, was the first person who, who became involved out of those uh, people that you, you were discussing. And what became very clear to me early on is that if, if I was going to do this, that we need, I needed to surround myself with people with one who had credibility in motorsport and two uh, knew what they were talking about as far as motorsport was concerned. No one was ever going to pick the phone up to me and, and take me seriously. So David introduced actually the most important person in, in all of the mix, and that was our cornerstone investor. You know, I can't underestimate how difficult it is to raise a few million pounds just on an idea. And he introduced a school friend of his called Sean Wadsworth, who, who has put in a, a, a really, really significant amount of money into the business. And, and being a business person myself, you know, that's, you know, money is really, you know, is, is, is crucial to everything. Um, so I have to thank David for that introduction. But obviously David also introduced Dave Ryan, who's the racing director at McLaren formerly, and also Matt Bishop, the, the comms director. And, and the three of us, so that was Dave, Matt and me, you know, spent a huge amount of time in 2018, in the summer of 2018, you know, sort of putting you know, the ideas to, together. David and Sean were working with us too. You know, there was sort of a core of five, you know, and, you know, the little team was, was slowly growing. But uh, it, we needed motorsport input, and that is what they all gave, gave to us. So I'm, I'm rather embarrassed, you know, that people say, oh, it's all you, because it's certainly not me. It's, it's taken a village to produce W Series, and, and those people have been absolutely key. And I suggest without any one of those people, W Series wouldn't have been as successful as it has been. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that with me. And I definitely agree, you know, you're only as good as your team. Um, and so that's really, really important. I find it really interesting the way that you guys have actually designed the series. Um, for example, I love that the race drivers get a different set of engineers each race um, and they learn how to work with crews from all different countries, different languages, different cultures. So what was the creative process like behind designing the series? Well, it was it was great fun because I came from uh, a background of first principles. So every we didn't make any decision because it had been done before. We made every single decision because it was the right thing to do for us. And I think it, that's a very freeing process, actually allowing to be, you know, we allowed ourselves to be as creative as possible. And at the heart of our DNA was equality. You know, we wanted the drivers to have equal cars and we didn't want the, the richer drivers to have an advantage. Therefore, we believed that we had to pay for the drives for all of the drivers. So, you know, people like Alice Powell hadn't raced for over five years. You know, the last time she had raced, she was, she was in GP3. I mean, it, it's now, you know, International Formula 3. Um, and solely because of money, she, she couldn't get that money. You know, she could, didn't have the ability to drive again. So, 
you know, the, the, the structure of W Series was really based on those two principles, is that all the cars had to be identical and we were going to pay for all of the expenses of, expenses of the drivers. And, and the fusion of those two concepts means that we actually do find out who the fastest driver is. And whilst, you know, the brilliant Jamie won, you know, we had six races, but we did have five different winners of races. So, you know, we did have you know, a lot of talent there. You know, right at the start of the season, it just worried me. We could control everything, but obviously what we couldn't control, what was going to happen out on the circuit. And it was, it was just wonderful to see, one, the quality of racing, but two, that, that you know, Jamie wasn't necessarily going to run away with the championship, um, like it looked like after the first two races. Um, so talking a little bit about what you talked about there, about kind of getting your investor into the series, what were the kind of keys to getting him in? Because as you mentioned, obviously, it was a, you know, there wasn't a proof of concept yet. Um, and how do you think, how would the funding be impacted by COVID? So the, how did you get him in? Um, a lot of hard work and persuasion. No, actually, I, I think Sean was convinced by the fact that there was a massive gap in the market. You know, when we started first talking, you know, back in 2000 and, and sort of the end of 16, you know, you know, there are really serious discussions started in 2017, is that if you looked at the numbers of women who were racing in single seater series throughout the world, you know, as I've often said, the numbers at that point were going down year on year and that trend had, had gone on for a number of years. And that was absolutely at the point where other sports like cricket, rugby, football, you know, the women involved in those sports was increasing, their involvement was increasing significantly. So we, we both had this shared belief that you know, there, there was something that was going wrong with motorsport. And actually that was a business opportunity. And, and that's why, you know, he believed that, you know, he could put his money in and, and at some point he would get a return on it. And COVID, the impact of COVID. Um, I think in the long term, um, I will look back and, um, and this isn't taking away the, the terrible nature of what has happened to millions of people across, across the world. But for us, it, it gave us a pause for thought. You know, we were running at a million miles an hour, you know, going into the second season, you know, this time last year. And when you do, you know, when you set something up like this from scratch, you know, you can't underestimate the amount of work that is involved and the number of, you know, rabbit holes you go down. And, you know, so, you know, it's not everything that you do, you get right first time. So you have to keep repeating processes, which means that it is just extremely hard work. And, last year gave us a pause you know we had time to think about what we were what we had achieved what we could achieve what we could turn into and ultimately how to maintain you know the sustainability of of w series you know i i'd been asked at length before we had started to race um whether if we were successful then we would uh, cease to exist because obviously we were all about um, getting more women into um, motorsport and I said very clearly at the time well if you know we've got 30 50 percent of women who are racing then W series will cease to exist but you know the way it was received and especially I think the glory day of, of Brands Hatch which is our last race in 2019 2019 was such a fabulous day I think you know W series is is here because I think as a sport it's it stands on its own two feet and provided people want to watch it and be fans of W Series, I don't see any reason why why it should stop. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree. And I think um, following your journey, you've spoken extensively about you know people's opinions, which are obviously quite strong about women in motorsport. And I remember hearing you say once, if I'd listened to people's opinions on the W Series, it would never have happened. Um, what kind of criticism was the idea getting? Were they more from the people within the industry or outside? And how did you, like, how did you deal with that emotionally and, and mentally? Well, I'm the youngest of four children, and so I was <laughs> so very close together. I had two older brothers that I had a very pugilistic relationship with. So um, I, I'd never, I, I had a 
a, a good ability uh, not to take on board people's criticisms too much. Um, but a, a lot of the criticism actually happened from friends of mine involved in the, in the sports industry. One of the major criticisms was a systemic criticism, and this is back in 2016, 17, 18, to say, Catherine, it's a great idea. It certainly is, is required in motorsport, but remember, no one watches women's sport. And that was a, but, but, but they were not wrong. I mean, at that time they didn't, you know, the stats of the people um, in watching women's sport was really small and, and we all need luck. And in 2019, because of the Women's World Cup, I think that that started to change the way that people looked at women's sport. You know, they believed for the first time that it could become commercially successful. I mean, if you look at uh, what we achieved just in the UK with our Channel 4 broadcast, we became, just within six races, we became the second most watched motorsport in the UK after F1, and we were the second most watched female sport after football. So, I mean, what that did demonstrate to us is that there is a potential audience out there. Well, there is an audience, it's no potential. You know, we believe that there was a potential audience, but we demonstrated that there actually actively was an audience. And of course, what we're looking to do is, you know, grow that audience significantly, both in the UK and in the rest of the world this year. Um, I would expect that our drivers, because of that resilience that I talked about before, would actually cope with it better than the average person because, you know, they've had to de deal with, with setbacks. You know, when I... I mean, I do remember very clearly one of the most memorable, memorable moments of 2020 is when I was at the town hall with the drivers actually telling them that we weren't going to race in 2020. And their immediate reaction was asking me, was I okay, am I all right? And not, you know, they weren't thinking of themselves at all. I mean, it was absolutely extraordinary. And then. There was a lovely counterpoint to that, that um, when I told them, they all came onto the, you know, the, um, the same Zoom call for me to tell them that we had done the deal with Formula One that they had done. And their reaction is just another reaction that I couldn't, react, uh, I couldn't have predicted at all because they didn't say anything. I was expecting them all to be screaming and shouting and saying, this is great. And I was going, isn't this good news? And um, I think they were so shocked. I think they were, I, I think that they had had, you know, such a bad year and they was almost expecting more bad news. And when I didn't just give them good news, I gave them great news. Um, it took a bit of time to process. Now, after that, at the end of the Zoom call, then I got loads of messages from them direct, you know, with all the happy emojis and, doing cartwheels and thing and personal messages. Um, but it was just so funny to, um, to see them, you know, not immediately react in, in a fantastically excited way. Do you consider taking the W Series to more controversial locations such as Saudi Arabia, where there's clearly, you know, feminism issues? Um, do you think that racing there would be a powerful way to complement your message? Yes, I do. I mean, I, I do believe in the positive force of sport. I believe that in order to make the world a better place, you need to talk and you need to communicate. I think if people don't um, you know, share the same values as you, which is the promotion of, of women, but I, I, I mean, I know a number of Saudis and I know a number of female Saudis who are very happy and very successful, but I think there are um, I think the best way of getting over any hurdle is to go and demonstrate how you do it. So I would welcome the opportunity to go there because I would welcome the opportunity of Saudi seeing in their, you know, the Saudi people seeing in their own backyard, you know, what W Series is and, and what we've achieved audience Q&A, the Patreon round. Um, so you've already answered one, which was about um, the driver's reaction. So the other one comes in from Ali, who um, asks, would you ever consider having men enter the series to prove that it can be a mixed series? That's a really, really, really interesting question. W Series is about women at the, mo at the moment. 
I mean, maybe at some point in the future, we can have WM series. Um, but, you know, we, we, we aren't there yet. That's not on our strategic plan. But um, it is something that I would enjoy enormously and, and I think would be good fun. You know, I've, I've never, you know, people when they first criticised W Series, you know, said it was all about segregation. I mean, I, I've i never, re you know, recognised that word. I don't believe we segregate all of our drivers go off and race against men, you know, throughout the year, you know, when they can race, obviously. And, um, you know, and we encourage them to do that. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's a great thought and something that I wouldn't rule out. Thank you guys for listening. Season three will be back with a bang in the autumn. Until then, we've got plenty of impactful bonus and bite-sized episodes coming your way. So don't forget to subscribe and share the show with your friends because it truly means the world to us. And if you're interested in some super cool rewards like virtual DJ lessons with me, signed books from our guests and exclusive merchandise, then head over to www.patreon.com forward slash mission makers to check out how you can start supporting the show for less than what it costs you to fill up your car. So till then, mission makers, be safe, be healthy and be laser focused. Mission makers.